Is it possible that the reason most entrepreneurs fail in business can actually be explained by a model designed in 1974 called Spiral Dynamics? In this video, we're gonna explore that very subject, how it could be the secret to not only avoid the pitfalls in business that most fall into, but to also 10X your business, be happier, be a better lover, and most likely even live longer. How's that? for a bold effing claim. In the next 15 minutes, I'm gonna back this wild claim up. I'm gonna show you examples of it, of real world situations and give you a beacon. Let's call it a shining star for you to aim at that if you reach it, it will change your entire world. Are you ready? Awesome, let's get started. Okay, welcome back to the channel where we dive deep into the secrets of success. Today, we're exploring a fascinating framework called Spiral Dynamics. It's a model developed by Claire W. Graves in 1974, and it describes the stages of human development, of consciousness, using different colors to represent each individual stage. I was introduced to this Spiral Dynamics back in 2010 at a business conference where they used it to represent different personalities, how they interact with each other. They give some participants some hats. They ask them to stay in character. They try to really highlight how badly each of the traits actually handle one another. It was just hilarious, right? Studying different personality traits though in business is nothing new. You have a lot of different tests to find out the best way for teams to work with one another from the type indicator and the, probably the most well-known, which is the DISC assessment. Well, most of these tests are usually designed to find employees that are fit in with your group or how multiple people will actually work together. They're often focusing on traits and what the person does really well. So how can a model that focuses on human consciousness actually help? Well, first, let's take a look at the different colors, the different levels in the spiral dynamics and their significance. This is a basic understanding of what the colors are and their original meanings when relating to human development and of consciousness. The first level is beige. This stage is all about survival instincts. It's individuals focus on their basic needs like food, water, safety. It's the me mentality at its most primal. The second stage is purple. Here the focus shifts to we mentality. It emphasizes community, group, identity, and tradition. It's about safety and trust within the closed knit groups. The next stage is red. This stage represents power and ego. It's about asserting control and dominance. It's about making bold moves. It's the me mentality resurfacing again really strongly here. Next stage is blue, and that's all about order and authority. It's paramount. Individuals seek stability through rules, structure, adherence to a higher purpose or a system. Think religion, military, or even maybe the police force. Next one is orange. This stage is characterized by a focus on achievement, success, strategic thinking. It's about progress, innovation, individual accomplishments. It's usually attributed to business. And the next one is green. Here, the focus shifts back to we, emphasizes community, equality, collaboration. It's about harmony, consciousness, and social connections. It sounds amazing, but in an unhealthy world, it can actually expose some major world issues. And these are all what they call the tier one colors. Next are the tier twos, and that starts with yellow, and that stage represents an integral approach. It's combining all of the strengths, all of the previous stages, and it's also about flexibility, systems thinking, it's about leveraging the collective strengths of others. Next one is turquoise, and that's the highest stage where the focus is really on holistic understanding. It's about global consciousness. It's about interconnectedness of all things. Think oneness. And there is also one more stage here, and this is called coral. But at that stage, let's face it, you don't need to be watching me on YouTube for that type of info. That's way up, way above this pay grade, way above this video. All right, so now a couple of things about these levels. They are hierarchical, meaning they are in order for a reason. You don't just jump from one stage to another without passing all of the stages in between. So there's no shortcuts. And although I've heard people actually state that you don't drop levels, I think what we've witnessed over the last couple of years around you know the United States, different communities, in through Russia and Europe and, and all of these sorts of places, we can actually see different communities, cities, states, even countries dropping levels of consciousness, whether that's in religion, whether it's in ethics, whether it's called wokeness or racial or 
divide or political. It doesn't matter what it is, but you can actually see different states, different countries move up and down that spectrum or that spiral. Okay, so let's also challenge ourselves to view this model stages from a business perspective. Okay, so each stage has its own set of values and behaviors that influence how we operate and how we grow a business. For instance, beige or that first primarial stage in business is all about survival. It's about getting your first clients, about keeping the lights on, right? And as you progress and move into the purple stage, that's where you start to build a team, you start to establish a sense of identity, community within your business. Let's dive even deeper into the stages and start with red. Now, many entrepreneurs get trapped here, right? This is the stage that's characterized by the power dynamics. It's ego-driven decisions. It's about asserting control. It's about making bold moves. It's often adopting a my way or the highway mentality. And we'll come back to this red one pretty soon. Moving to the blue stage, businesses start to focus on structure, rules, systems. They create stability and order. This stage is crucial for starting to scale operations efficiently. In the orange stage, which is the next stage, the focus starts to move towards strategic growth and innovation. Much how like the tech giants of the world push the envelope to start to stay ahead. The green stage then brings a shift forward and towards inclusivity and community within the business. It starts promoting a collaborative culture. And the ultimate next step would be yellow. This is where you start to collaborate with others. You start to see their strengths. You be flexible. You give everybody an outstanding experience, not only your customers, but also your staff, your suppliers, anyone else that deals with you and your company. You create the ultimate raving fan base. You do so without the hustle, without the stress. I'm not even sure about you, but this is the vision that I see when I shut my eyes and start to dream. At Turquoise, your business now changes humanity. You start making a difference to the world. You start creating a ripple that lasts a long time after you move to your next vibration. The ultimate business oneness though, it's very rare. It's not for everyone and not even everyone has that vision. And that's totally okay. The ones that do, though you know who you are, I wish you nothing but light for your journey. The pivotal stage in all of this system though is stage three. It's the red stage of spiral dynamics. Entrepreneurs here, face the challenge of moving beyond ego-driven decisions into a more strategic, more inclusive approaches. The trap lies in the power God mode, where the business owner's ego starts to dominate. It leads to a toxic work environment and stunted growth. And it's critical to recognize that this stage, because staying here can cause your business not only to stagnate, but also to even collapse. And to make matters worse, so-called business teachers around the world, they try to foster this ego. Many books just focus on the first three stages of these spiral dynamics. Think about it. Survival, right? How to actually get your business operational, building your tribe. And then the last one is how to take control and take control through ego. So it's no wonder that we can actually falter here. Now, getting stuck at stage three isn't just frustrating, it's disheartening. It's the, the consequences are significant. Lost opportunities, dwindling motivation, and in some cases, just complete burnout. Entrepreneurs usually at this stage feel isolated. It's like no one else understands their unique challenges that they're facing. The struggles can start to erode their passion. It can make them question their path, and here's the thing, this stage can also be a learning ground. It can be where you build your most resilience, you refine your strategies, and you can also prepare for complete breakthrough. So how do you move beyond stage three? Well, if the goal is to transition to yellow stage, the focus needs to shift back to we, but in a more holistic and integral way. Then there's a noticeable pattern between the stages. If you haven't noticed, it's not a coincidence. Me, we, me, we, me, we. Depending on what stage you're currently at, we either have to create self-action, meaning the answer is for you to actually do something, or you need to enlist the skills or recognize the strengths of the people around you and leverage their skills to build a more resilient and innovative business. It's all about fostering collaboration and also action. It's about embracing flexibility and also making sure you meet those demands. 
It's a weird thing, but strategies to achieve this include continuous learning, strategic planning, building, and making sure that you build a robust support network around yourself and cultivating self-awareness. Most importantly, building systems in your business that allow others to bring their value to you. Yellow is ultimately about the balance between the me and the we, taking controlled and targeted self-action while understanding you are not alone. You are not the only one that can do your skill. And the next level of your consciousness and your business starts with you accepting that. Remember, balance is not static. It's the constant movement to maintain equilibrium. All right, thank you very much for joining me on this journey through Spiral Dynamics and entrepreneurship. If you find this video or this subject insightful, make sure you like, subscribe, hit the notification bell and comment. Please let me know exactly what you think. I'd love to hear your experiences. Have you faced similar challenges in your journey? Just share your stories in the comments below. Don't forget to check out some of our other videos. You'll see one right there. And uh, let's just keep growing together. Until next time, thanks very much.